Hello. I wanted to show you how I drive around on the moon. So first off, you got to bring a couple of rovers. I already lost one. Uh, and the reason you have to bring them is because uh, even if you use quick save and quick load, at some point there will be some kind of bug that will screw you over and you'll lose a rover. So always bring at least two. Um, these are small, so I brought four. The other thing you need to know is that you want to be in docking mode. Un docking mode. And you want to have your SAS. Since you're in docking mode, it's okay. Because when you press forward, you won't tip forward. You'll just move forward. The other key to enjoying your uh, your rovers is to hit Alt period. That'll bring you into physics warp. Uh, you can think of physics warp as your gear shift. So this is like your highest gear, and then you can bring it down. And this is like your more tightly controlled gear for turning and managing your your uh, detail. Uh, you know, if you don't want to bounce around too much, bringing it all the way down to physics warp one is only something I recommend if you're actually going off a jump or if you're out of control. And the reason for that is because when you try and go back into physics warp, you'll probably just hit period rather than alt period. And while if you're on the surface, that works okay, if you're in the air like that, it'll kill you instantly. So, uh, generally speaking, keep it between 2 and 4, except when you're out of control or about to land. And I'm going to go ahead and drive around some to show you how it works. Uh, so there's a couple of things. You notice this isn't a stock rover, but you can build very similar rovers out of stock parts. The only reason I prefer this rover is because I can go at 40 or 50 meters per second, whereas with stock parts you can't go above 30 or your wheels will start to break. Um, now if your rover has these problems where it seems to be wallowing in the ground, that's usually because your wheels are broken, and you can repair your wheels by getting out and fixing them, and I'm sure I'll see that, that bug in this particular video. Oh, that, that's not a bug, that uh, event in this particular video. Um, with custom wheels like this, it's not, all, it's not always obvious because they don't always come with their own broken model. A lot of them, you can't tell the difference. So uh, if, you're, if you suddenly start falling through the floor, it's because your wheels broke. But there is a way to keep your wheels from breaking quite as easily, and I'm going to show it to you now. You can go turn on RCS and hold Shift and that will keep you from hitting gr the ground quite so hard. So uh, hold RCS and hold shift and you will land much softer. Of course it depends on how much RCS you've actually got on your vehicle, obviously. Uh, if you don't have very much RCS, if you don't have very many RCS thrusters, you're still gonna land too hard like that. And then you start to fall out of control, bring it down to physics warp one and don't panic. So normally speaking, this is all okay. Uh, you don't need to worry too much about it, but you want to be in un mode as much as possible because that way your SAS will attempt to repair itself. Whereas if you're in rotation mode, it'll rely on you to try and fix it. And if you're spinning out of control, it's almost impossible to figure out which way you should spin to fix it. Now the reason I'm slowing down is because I wanted to inspect my wheels and you can see that they're all fine. Um, they're all nominal and that means that none of them are going to fall through the surface and they've all got good grip. So I can continue on my way and that just means I'm going to turn off my RCS. Uh, as I think I mentioned, your RCS, uh, your SAS will eat through your RCS rather rapidly, so only turn on your RCS when you actually plan to land like this. Um, the other key to actually enjoying your, your uh, vehicle is crash recovery. Uh, and I did a little bit there, but I was too involved to actually explain what I was doing. When you press space, you shift between docking mode um, and docking mode rot. When you're in ducking mode rot, you can uh, direct your ship, uh, and in this case your rover, with much more precision. If you're out of control, that's no good. But if you're in the air and you happen to be pointed the wrong direction, keep in mind that pressing right and left will not actually make you turn right or left because you're in mm mode. So it only makes you turn right and left when you're on the ground and your wheels have purchase. Therefore, if you actually need to turn right and left desperately, press space and you'll be able to do it. So let's go ahead and shift down to time warp 2 so that I can get a little bit of purchase with my wheels. Uh, friction doesn't work right at the higher time warps so if you want it to turn you really need to take it down to time warp 2. I mean you could press space and then turn like that but that means that when you hit the ground you'll your wheels will catch and you'll probably flip. Uh, flipping is usually pretty disastrous. I actually built this so that it doesn't really care that much but uh, in general you want to be careful when you flip. And I left my RCS on there for some reason, um, so I'm not sure how much I have left. Ah, still plenty. Uh, by the way, I use generators rather than solar panels, um, so you know that means I don't have to carry any heavy batteries. 
but it does mean I have to carry some heavy generators. Uh, also, don't use the largest stock wheels. They're terrible. They're only good if you absolutely need to support something that huge. And if your rover is that big, it shouldn't be a rover. It should be a lander. Um, although, obviously, I've seen some really cool rovers that are that big, but they're not my style. So you can see that I'm having a lot of fun. I'm driving around really fast. Uh, and it's just not, it's not difficult at all. Uh, it's fun. And if you start to lose control, you should just bring the physics down, press space. Oop, not, not that fast. Oop. And you can see that I lost control, so I'm just going to bring it down, not panicking. Bring it down to physics warp 1. Let my um sort out my rotation, then press space, and bring it so that I'm in alignment. And then press space again, and then press RCS and shift, and there you go. No problem. Back under control. Uh, now you can see that my, RC, my SAS is actually a little bit aggressive there, but in general, unless your SAS is overwhelming, you're okay. You probably won't have to turn it off um, in docking mode. Uh, it's a lot more difficult if you're not in docking mode, because then you tip forward whenever you try and accelerate. Once again, I'm out of control, so I press space. I br bring the time warp down to 1, press space, bring it back into, into control, press space again. Uh, there we are. And then land. I'm not going to bother using RCS for that one. And then bring it back into warp, remembering to hit alt so I don't fall through the floor and explode. And, I mean, this is this is a lot of fun. Uh, and I'm not really paying that much attention. And I'm sick as hell. Like, uh, I got some kind of ear infection, and I'm dizzy, and I'm running a fever, and I'm talking at the same time. So this is not something that requires a huge amount of skill. It just requires you to know how to do it, and then you can have as much fun as you want driving around in a rover on the moon or any other gravitational body that you care to mention. Uh, it's just so fun, and it's so much easier than people make it out to be. You don't have to worry about how fast you're going. You don't have to worry about whether or not you're going to flip. You just have to master the basics of bringing the time warp back down to one and uh, uh, and pressing space and rotating when you need to. It's uh, Just don't panic, and it's really quite fun and quite easy. Uh, let's go. I think there's a big jump over there. Let's go ahead and go off of that as our finale bring my time warp down a little bit so I can get some purchase with my wheels so that I can turn, like so. Yeah, that looks like a jump. Let's go over that. No problem. So yeah, have all the fun you want. Don't uh, don't worry too much. Rovers are a lot more fun than you might think. And if you tried them and got sick of them, try them again. They might surprise you. And if you don't know what you want, you can always download my uh, my mod. It comes with a rover called the Night Spider, which isn't great, but it's much better than um, than rovers that a first time builder might build. And you can you can really play around with it a lot. Uh, here's what I was looking for. I broke a wheel. So first things first, when you break a wheel, do not hit the brakes button. You'll just flip. You really need to decelerate first. So make sure that you take your speed down to less than 10 meters per second. And if you have uh, your RCS set up correctly, you can do that because pressing back will not only tell your wheels to go in reverse, but it'll also fire your reverse RCS. So now that I'm below 10, I'll hit the brakes. And you can see that it really does just, it break, the brake, all the wheels break way too well. Um, so, i uh, take my SAS off, and you can see that I broke a wheel. I might have broken more than one, but that's very easy to fix. You just go ahead and pop out, like so, and then you press space to let go, and you can go over to whatever wheel's busted. Oh, I fell through. And repair it. That's how you do it. So I hope you enjoyed this uh, How to Drive Your Rover tutorial, and... Uh, I'll see you next time when I'm not as sick.